Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So I've got to go through the background of this video because I made a video and I'm now putting this at the beginning of that video because I was linked to a video made by another YouTube channel saying that on my analysis of Morissette Eamon that she was using pitch correction and that I hadn't spotted it because I said that she wasn't using it. So I left a comment on that channel just explaining about the pitch monitoring software and how the gap between the lines is really important in order to see all of the information and you know to zoom in and expand it and, and make sure that what you think might be on a line is actually on the line and isn't kind of slightly off. I see that there's been a follow-up video after the comment that I made and the follow-up video is still stating that the first judgment that I came to was wrong and that their video is proof or maybe proof question mark something like that and this is not a, a witch hunt or anything like that. I commented on this channel saying that I'm all about objective data and the more data that's shared, the better, because then you get a more reliable result and conclusion. So we're just going to jump into little bits of that video just so I can explain a few things about it. So on that first video, Morissette is singing in a bus. I didn't know that it was a bus, but it's a radio station that's inside a bus and she's singing into a condenser mic. So you get a pristine sound to her voice. Now, the audio that he's chosen to compare it with is, I believe, crowd recorded audio from outside the bus. And we're hearing her voice through speakers and you can hear ambient sounds going on, people talking. And first of all, I wouldn't use that for any analysis, just purely because having ambient sounds there of people talking, the pitch monitoring software is going to try and plot that on the graph. It doesn't know that it's only supposed to be listening for the singer, it's just listening for any pitches. The other thing is acoustic space. So I'm, I'm just going to play the two examples of the same phrase inside the bus and then outside the bus. So uh, you'll hear uh, him saying maybe what it is. I'm not sure. Let's have a listen. Okay, so you can instantly hear this is outside. You can hear the people talking, but also the reverb on the voice because of the acoustic space. It's cavernous and by the way if you want to record your voice through the vocal pitch monitor and have a look at the lines on the screen and then record the voice again and apply reverb or even just apply reverb to the same recording you will see how the vocal lines change because reverb it's going to continue after the vocal has stopped because that's what it does it decays so that length of decay is taking a note that ended and it's decaying at a particular pitch that the pitch monitoring software will tell you but that didn't exist that's the reverb extending and effectively reverberating the note that we've had before the noise that we've had before so uh, that's what happens with reverb they're going to look different the lines when you're in a different acoustic space and you've got different reverb on a voice. But anyway, I'll let you listen to the outside version again. So that's outside and this is what we're comparing it to. And I know that a lot of people will say, well, it just sounds like one's outside and one's inside. <laughs> but I mean, that's the point that the inside voice is so pristine that the vocal pitch monitor isn't hearing voices and isn't hearing resonant frequencies. This is a really important thing to bring up because when you're listening, especially through speakers, anybody that's played live and you've had fold back or you've been playing at volume and you've strummed a chord on your guitar and you think oh how am I out of tune I just tuned up five minutes ago you're hearing resonant frequencies it's just a particular part in the room and this is what sound does it, it bounces all over the place and something can sound 
out of tune, but then when you move on stage, you go over to the other side and now you sound in tune. So yeah, sound does weird things in different acoustic environments. So in order to get a good comparison of this, you would need somebody in the studio, not taking the direct feed, but just recording her voice in that space. So just from that point of view, again, it's it's having subject material that will stand up to scrutiny. And, and certainly all the other noises going on, you think, well, that's not gonna be reliable data to use that to compare to a studio recorded vocal into a condenser mic. So, I mean, a good example of this would be just how sound works when a police car goes past you and you know that it's going Nino, 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 Nino. you know that it's Nino, two notes but when it goes past you it goes Nino, 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 Nino. and the pitch changes so people aren't going around pitch correcting police cars that's just how sound works it's how frequencies work how sound waves work the further it gets away from you the faster the lower the pitch gets when it accelerates away from you because now effectively it's spreading out the frequencies. So in life <laughs> and out in the real world, sound does do funny things, but it's now taking a sound that is outside with talking and with potential harmonic frequencies that might register as sharp or flat of what is actually going on. You can't really reliably say that, oh, this is exactly the same voice and exactly the same information going into the vocal pitch monitor. I think about five or six minutes into the video, he plays the sound from outside the bus and then compares it with the sound from outside the bus again. But he thinks that he's listening to the sound inside the bus. And I think that I can clearly hear the difference between inside and outside the bus, but he obviously kind of misses that. But I just want to point out a few more things as well. Now here, this was outside of the bus. Here, uh, he kind of nails it there, right? Even there. Let's compare it to the inside of the bus. Yeah, so this kind of looks pretty similar, right? So just to point out what's happened, he's played the same audio through the pitch monitoring software twice in a row, thinking that it's the different audios of inside the bus and then outside the bus. And I think he says it looks pretty similar, right? So yeah, he, he's correct in that, but it's exactly the same, or at least it should be. So I've made it full screen so you can see things a little bit more clearly because what I want to point out is that you could hear that this is the same thing being played into this pitch monitoring software twice. It's exactly the same audio. So therefore, the result should be exactly the same. These lines should cross over each other perfectly. And when I bring in the other time that he's listened through, you might start to notice, like at the bottom right here, let's keep an eye on it. Does that look like it's exactly the same thing played twice? We know that it is, it's the same audio, but look at the way that the pitch monitoring software is interpreting what's being played into it. Even though it's the same thing, it's picking up different lines. It's plotting it in different places. So when I say about things needing to be you know, really strict with the method and the software being used, this just shows that however this is being uh, conducted, we're not getting a reliable result from one playthrough to the next playthrough. And, you know, if we start getting into real details here, let's just zoom in by 200%, there'll be little things you'll start to notice, which are things like this. This is a change in pitch. It's now flat and it's now on the line, but this is the same audio played twice. So it means that if you can't rely on it plotting the same thing twice, that is the same thing, you can't rely on anything that it says. And you know, look at this, you'll start to see it morph into something different. So 
And he, wow, even here, this is the same audio played twice. Watch this. We've actually now got a change of what, three to five cents? Either side of that, but it's the same audio. So anyway, yeah, I'm not gonna keep saying, I mean, look at down here. I mean, again, it's plotting it in totally different places. So yeah, going back to it, we've played exactly the same thing through, or at least has been done by this channel. And if the results aren't reliable, if you don't get the same thing time after time after time after time, then you can't use that and you can't use the results or say that the results are reliable because it's not, you know, one time it could be sharp, one time it could be flat, one time it could be dead on the line. It just depends on which time you're playing it or whatever results it decides it wants to give you. And this is the thing about my setup here. I always do everything exactly the same way. And I've shown in the past how playing the same thing multiple times through my setup, it will always, it will literally go over itself perfectly. So you know that whatever it's hearing, it is hearing. And when it hears that same thing again, it hears it exactly the same way and will plot it in exactly the same way. So as I've already said, I wouldn't have used that outside audio and recording to compare with the studio vocal or the vocal inside the bus because there are too many variables. And the most obvious of which is that the software, when it's hearing the same thing twice, is plotting the pitch in a different way, in different places. So you think, well, if it's plotting the same thing in different places, how can you ever expect it to plot something different in the same place as something else, such as a recording outside to a recording inside? So you've got that fundamental issue. But even if we threw that aside and we said, right, when we're outside, could the frequency have been different? Could the pitch have been plotted differently due to resonant frequencies? Absolutely valid point. You could say, yes, that can happen and it happens regularly. Uh, yeah, things vibrate, you get harmonics, you know, sound can do unusual things. So yeah, you can say that that's valid. Next you say, could it have been the acoustic space, the reverb? that's changing the way that it looks. Absolutely, yeah, that's another valid one. Could it have plotted somebody's voice who was talking between vocal phrases? And it's just picked that up because of the you know, ambient noise and the talking that's going on. Absolutely valid, that, that could have happened as well. Could the speakers that were being used to project this sound and, and the audio to the audience, could that have been in some way, you know, resonating, vibrating to make it now a different frequency that was being given to the audience outside rather than the actual one in front of the microphone. Again, absolutely valid. You, you, we don't know what the speakers were doing. What were the speakers standing on? Were they on a metal stage that then could potentially be like a huge tuning fork and start vibrating? <laughs> there are so many variables that you can go into when you, you don't know all of the details, but also somebody's phone. It might have been recorded on somebody's phone. Maybe they had their phone on silent and they received a text message and their phone vibrated and the vibrations caused frequencies to be, you know, created as sound waves and then the pitch monitoring software is picking that up. There are so many things that, <laughs> that, you know, the more you talk about it, the more things you can add to the list as to why the results aren't reliable. But the first one, which is a given, your software has got to produce the same thing twice when you play it the same thing. Otherwise, everything now is unreliable. So I just wanna finish by saying that the guy who's made this video on his channel, he's not doing it in a malicious way. He's not having a go at me. He's not having a go at you, the subscribers, and he's not discounting any of the other videos that I've done on pitch correction or criticizing them. And he openly says that he's not a professional and he doesn't have the experience that I do of doing this kind of thing. So it's just him looking at these lines on a screen and saying if he thinks it's pitch corrected or not. That's what he's doing. So I think you've got to take that into consideration and don't go onto his channel and start having a go at him or anything like that. It's just purely something that he's just having a quick look at and saying what he thinks. So. That's a really important thing to put out there. It's not 
anything malicious. So just take it for what it is. I'm making this video just so you guys can maybe see the inner workings of it a little bit more clearly, but also see the detail that I put into my videos to make sure that every analysis is as reliable as the previous one. So it's just literally one after the next, after the next, going through exactly the same process with the exact same level of reliability. I've realized that it's gone on for quite a while. So I'm gonna release this as its own separate video and maybe I'll release the other one in the future at some point. All I was doing in that other video was showing about, you know, zooming into the line, seeing that pitch is being plotted exactly where you think it is and yeah just making sure that you dive into the details so yeah maybe we'll do that in the future maybe not who knows but thank you guys for watching this particular video as always let me know what you guys think in the comment section below keep the suggestions and requests coming as well and if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll catch you guys at the next one rock